فاشرف بي لاشتغال بالعلم ولا تبغي به ما عشت يا ذا بدلا ويا له من شرف عظيم It's called صياغن صريح صياغن صريحة It's for it's a direct form It's called what? Direct form. The second one is, and how many ways does it come in? The CO4. The first one is if'al. The author just brought it right now. Anything that comes in the form of if'al. Anything that comes in the form of what? If'al. The second one is anything that comes in the لتفعل You are going to do The third one is اسم الفعل اسم اسم الفعل Anything that comes in the form of اسم الفعل And the third one is anything that comes as a مصدر Anything that comes as a a master, which is a verbal noun. The author only mentioned uh, if'al form, okay? He didn't mention from the siyahus sariha, except that. The second one is. صِيَغٌ غَيْرُ صَرِيحَةٌ Forms that are not direct. And it is the صِيَغ which are غَيْرُ صَرِيحَةٌ are it wasn't placed by the Arabs. The صِيَغ which is غَيْرُ صَرِيحَةٌ is هي التي لم توضع للأمر. It was not placed for it to be a command. في كلام العربي in the Arab usage. For example, if a person who does an action is praised. The person who does an action is praised. فاعل فعل A doer of an action is praised. In the speech of Allah, in the Quran and the Sunnah, if you find a person who does an action is praised, فإنه يفيد الأمر it shows command. And Ibn al-Qayyim in his kitab, بدعي الفوائد Amir al-Sanani, رحمه الله in his منظومة in Usul al Fiqh, they both have. Alhamdulillah. <coughs> they both have many examples for Siyagul Amr, which is indirect. And it is something that you will not find generally in books of Usul al Fiqh being spoken about, which is the. Uh, The Siyah Al-Amr, which is Ghayr Sariha. Generally, they don't talk about it in books of Usul Al-Fiqh. Then the author, Rahimahullah, mentioned, he spoke about three issues regarding the Amr. And that is three matters pertaining to the structure and the form of the Amr. ثم ذكر المصنف ثلاثة أمور تقتضيها سياق الأمر. The author goes on to speak about three things that the أمر. Three things, three things in which the form of the أمر carries. The author mentions. 
three things that the form and the structure of the Amr it carries those meanings the first one is the Siyagul Amr the form of the Amr I mean the structure of the Amr he says Tuhmalu Alayhi what does he mean by Tuhmalu Alayhi he means it benefits you when you see it unrestrictedly when you generally unrestrictedly you come across and you see an Amr without anything else being said just a mere command you see it when it's unrestrictedly commanded you're commanded to do something unrestrictedly it shows wujub So if Al, just like that, what does it show? It shows that it's wajib. If Allah Taala commands you to do something, don't say anything after that. Just Allah commands you to do something, what do you do? Do you have to do it or do you have a choice if you want to do it or not? Huh? If Allah commands you to do something, do you have the choice of whether you can do it or not? What do you have to do? So the author here is teaching you something called that the asal of a command is that it shows obligation. A command from Allah and His Messenger in its original essence, it shows that it's obligatory and that you have to do it. But that it shows obligation when it's unrestricted and there's no karina, there's no external force. What about if there comes an external force and it diverts it, it diverts it from what? Wajib. Like for example, I say here, stand up, stand up, stand up everybody. I've commanded you, it shows what? Obligation. Then I say, liman sha'a, whoever wants. Whoever wants, is an external force that diverted it from being obligatory. This is called a karina. Now you have a choice, it's your choice. Do you want to stand up or do you not want to? Are you with me brothers? Does that make sense? One of the also the qara'in that can divert something is Allah said in the Quran, Ya ayya alladheena amanu idha nudiya li salati min yawmil jumu'ati fas'u ila dhikri illahi wa dharu al-bay'a ذَلِكُمْ خَيْرُ لَكُمْ إِنْ كُنْتُمْ تَعْلَمُونَ فَإِذَا قُضِيَةِ الصَّلَاةُ فَانْتَشِرُوا so, فَإِذَا قُضِيَةِ الصَّلَاةُ The salah finished. Qudiyya. Intaha salah. Jum'a. We're listening. فَإِذَا قُضِيَةِ الصَّلَاةُ Allah says, فَانْتَشِرُوا فَانْتَشِرُوا Disperse. Disperse. فَانْتَشِرُوا is what, my brothers? It's a what? It's a command. فَإِذَا قُضِيَةِ الصَّلَاةُ when the Salah is prayed, the Jum'ah prayer, then the Imam goes, Assalamu Alaikum. Assalamu Alaikum. Allah says to us, Fantashiru, disperse. What about if I want to stay in the masjid? Allah told me to what? So am I allowed to stay in the masjid? After the Khutbah to Jum'ah, after the Jama'ah is led, the prayer is finished on Jum'ah, am I allowed to stay in the masjid? Hey Muhammad, Fadl, you seem like you want to answer, inshallah. Now you sure? I, I, I can see from your eyes you want to answer. <laughs> but Allah, we just took it. Now we all agreed, just now we're built up to it. That if Allah commands you something, you have to do it. So after Jum'ah, there has to be in the masjid a person who's got a stick. Get out of the masjid. Get out of the masjid, everybody. Get out of the masjid, brothers. Sah, kicking people out. What are you doing in the masjid, brother? Read the Quran. Get out of here. Allah told you to leave and go get a job. Huh? Brother, I just want to read the Quran. No, get out. After Friday, the masjid has to be cleared out. Is that right? Oh. That's what we want to come to now. 
there's an external force, something that's making this amar not be wajib. So what is it? You can help us here. So when Allah said, huh? so because the end he said, uh, uh, to go back uh, to what you're doing in terms of work and stuff. So I think this is Allah, but this seems to be a problem. Okay, good, good, good. I like this, mashallah. It's very sharp how you looked at it. So, brother is saying that business and trading was mubah in its original essence. Are you, is, is business and trading mubah? It's mubah. Huh? Mubah, right? We took what mubah means. It's permissible. You don't get rewarded for it, nor do you get punished for it. Mubah. That's what mubah means. You don't get rewarded for doing it, and you don't get punished for it. Do you get rewarded for eating? Do you get punished for eating? That would mean every bashal, everybody who's chubby is will get rewarded a lot. And a skinny one's gonna get punished. Is that the case? No. Eating is mubah, right? Huh? It is. It is. So trading and business in its original essence, it used to be what? The scholars, they said, pay attention. If something was mubah, memorize this qa'idah and keep it with you. If something is what? Mubah. Something is what? Something is mubah. Then it gets prevented from you for a period of time. You're stopped from doing that mubah. It becomes haram. Are you allowed to trade whilst it's Jum'ah? Ya ayyu alladheena amanu idha nudiya lis-salati al-jum'ati Ya ayyu alladheena amanu idha nudiya lis-salati min yawm al-jum'ati Fas'aw ila dhikrillah So you leave off your trading, you close your shop, and you come where? Where do you come? To the masjid. Something that was mubah, my trading was mubah. It's now being prevented from me. I am being told I cannot trade anymore. And that, there's a period of time in which it's being prevented from me. What's the period of time in which it's being prevented from me? Whilst the khutbatul jum'ah is taking place. Whilst the salatul jum'ah is going to be prayed. That period of time it's being made what? Haram. So scholars they say, mubah. If it gets prevented and prohibited for a period of time and then after that, so three things I'm saying, it's mubah in its original essence. And then it gets prevented from you what? Yeah? And it gets prevented from you. And then the Sharia comes and it commands you to do it. The third one is that the Sharia comes and it commands you to do it. They say this command, it means that it's taking it back to what? It's taking it back to its original essence. Are you with me, brothers? It means that it's taking it back to how, what it used to be. And that this Amar now is not seen obligatory. Another ayah in the Quran will be وَإِذَا حَلَلْتُمْ فَاسْطَادُوا وَإِذَا حَلَلْتُمْ فَاسْطَادُوا If you leave your, You leave your state of ihram You finish hajj or you finish umrah Allah says فَاسْطَادُوا Go and now hunt فَاسْطَادُوا is a command does it mean every single person who leaves Hajj has to start getting a gun? Huh? Is that what it means? No, it doesn't. It means that because the slide that was prevented from you and it was prohibited from you at the time of Hajj, you weren't allowed to hunt. Are you with me? Now, on the other hand, it's now made permissible for you. 
uh, or meaning it's been commanded for you to do, it means that it's been told, to, it's been taken back. If the thing is, if it was sunnah, and you got prevented from it, and then it went back and then you got commanded, it goes back to what it used to be. Whatever it was, it's that the Amr here is just taking it back to its original state. Araftum? That's a Qarina. Are you with me, brothers? That's cool day? It's cool day, Qarina. The second thing that the author mentioned, I said he said four things about the form, right? The four, second thing that he mentioned is, anna la yaktadi at-tikrar. The second thing, we're going back to the issue of the forms. Sah? Are you with me, brothers? The form of the Amar, I said it shows three things. The first one was what? That it shows in its unrestrictedly, without any external, po external factors. It shows what? It shows wujub, that it's obligatory. But when there comes an external factor, it becomes mubah. Or it can even become what? Mandub, recommended. Are you with me, brothers? So I was just giving an example of that. Now the second one we're going to move on to. The second one is, does if'al, do this, does it show repetition? Does the command of Allah, does it show repetition? Does that mean I have to keep doing it? Once I get, once I get commanded to do something, I have to keep doing it. Or does it just show that I have to, I, I have to do it once? The author here took the opinion that no, it doesn't show repetition. That's what he said. He said, وَلَا يَقْتَضِي تَكْرَارٍ It doesn't show repetition. عَلَى الصَّحِيحِ According to the strongest opinion out there. إِلَّا مَا دَلَّ الدَّلِيلُ عَلَى قَصْدِ التَّكْرَارِ Unless there shows an evidence. Unless there comes. Unless there is found an external evidence that makes it obligatory for you to do it many times. The evidence that the scholars use is when the man came to the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he said, Oh messenger of Allah Oh when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said Allah has made obligatory on you hajj فحجو go and do hajj Hujjo is what? It's an amr, it's a command. Are you with me, brothers? The man came and he said, Akulla ami ya Rasulullah. Is this every year? Is this what? Every year. The Prophet went quiet. He said, Akulla awa kulla amin ya Rasulullah. Is this every year, ya Rasulullah? The Prophet went quiet. The man asked on a third time, is it every year? Then the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam got upset and he said, إِذَا أَمَرْتُكُمْ بِأَمْرٍ If I command you a amr, فَأْتُوا مِنْهُ مَسْتَطَعْتُمْ Come with it as much as you can. إِذَا نَهَيْتُكُمْ عَنْهُ فَاجْتَنِبُوا وَمَا أَمَرْتُكُمْ بِهِ فَأْتُوا مِنْهُ مَسْتَطَعْتُمْ if I prevent you from something, stay away from it. If I command you to do something, do it. فَإِنَّمَا أَهْلَكَ الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ كَثْرَةُ مَسَائِلِهِمْ وَاخْتِلَافُ مَعْلَانْ The previous nations were destroyed because of their excessive questioning. They asked too many questions. Look at Banu Israel. Allah said to them, إِنَّ اللَّهَ يَأْمُرُكُمْ أَنْ تَذْبَحُوا إِنَّ اللَّهَ يَأْمُرُكُمْ أَنْ تَذْبَحُوا بقرة. Allah said, go and slaughter a cow. They should have just went and slaughtered a cow. That's all they had to do. Just go out of their way, get a cow, slaughter it, khalas. But is that what they did? No. They went to Nabi Allah and Musa and they said, what cow is it? What color is it? How should it look? What do you want for us? What is it? Just, just slaughter a cow. That's all it said to you. Until they made it so hard on themselves 
that the cow that they wanted that they was that was said to them it, it narrowed down to one cow owned by one man. So you can make matters hard on yourself. Lidalika the Prophet said to the man who asked if awakulla ami ya Rasulullah every year, the Prophet said, if I said yes, it would have been obligatory every year, and you would never have been able to do it. So this the scholars took from this is that the command it doesn't show takrar in its essence. And that's not what the Prophet meant. Are you with me, brothers? The third thing that the author mentioned here is the issue of Does the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, does it show that we have to do it straight away? The fourth thing is, does it show that we have to do it straight away? Hi brothers, do we have to do it straight away? The author here says, وَلَا يَقْتَضِي الْفَوْرِ It does not show that you have to do it straight away. That's the opinion that the author took, رَحِمَهُ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى We say, أَنَّهُ يَقْتَضِي الْفَوْرِ أَنَّهُ يَقْتَضِي الْفَوْرِيَّةِ نعم, it does show that you have to do it straight away. Are you with me, brothers? The issue that they're arguing here, is it fawriya or is it tarakhi? Are you with me, brothers? Some of you might say, well, Hajj, I, I don't have to do it straight away. Yes, you do. When, as soon as the ability comes in place, you have to do it straight away. Then the author, Rahimullah, he concluded two points with the chapter of command, or the unit of command. When he was speaking about it, he concluded with two points. The first one is, وَالْأَمْرُ بِإِجَادِ الْفِعْلِ أَمْرٌ بِهِ وَبِمَا لَا يَتِمُ الْفِعْلُ إِلَّا بِكَ كَالْأَمْرِ بِالصَّلَاةِ أَوْ أَمْرُ بِالطَّهَارَةِ الْمُؤَدِّيَةِ إِلَيْهَا The author talks about a very well-known principle called مَا لَا يَتِمُ الْوَاجِبُ إِلَّا بِهِ فَهُوَ فَهُوَ وَاجِبُ And this is a قاعدة أصولية Which is that If I can't do a particular thing And I can't attain this particular thing Unless I have to do something else, then that something else becomes obligatory. For example, do you have to now go do wudu? No. You might not even have wudu right now. But do you have to go and do wudu right now? No. But what about when dhuhr comes in? Because dhuhr can't be prayed and dhuhr is a wajib. The wajib which is dhuhr can't be attained and it can't be done unless you do what? Unless you do the tahur, tahara, which is the wudu. So the tahara now becomes obligatory. Are you with me, brothers? Is buying clothes obligatory? Yeah? Do you have to buy clothes? Do you and I have to, we're walking on the street, do you have to now go to JD's, JD, huh? Or any shop and buy clothes? Do you have to? Huh? What about if you urinated on yourself, for instance, or something filthy fell into your clothing and we're on the way to the masjid and there is impurity on your clothing. You have to now go buy clothes. Yes. You have to go to a shop and you have to buy yourself clothes. The reason is because the salah that you're going to, which is the masjid, you can't pray without having a pure clothing. So the qa'idah is مَا لَا يَتِمُ الْوَاجِبُ إِلَّا بِهِ فَهُوَ وَاجِبُ أَمَّا فَهُوَ وَاجِبٌ مَا لَا يَتِمُ الْوَاجِبُ إِلَّا بِهِ فَهُوَ وَاجِبٌ Anything which the obligatory cannot be done without it, it becomes what? Obligatory. This qa'idah which is مَا لَا يَتِيمُ الْوَاجِبُ إِلَّا بِهِ فَهُوَ وَاجِبْ is two types, is categorized into two types according to the ulama. It's categorized into what? It is categorized into two types. The 
The first type is something that's in the ability of the slave. It's in your ability. You can come with it. The, fir the first one is something that's in your ability. مَا هُوَ فِي وَسْعِ الْعَبْدِ وَقُدْرَتِهِ It's in the uh, slave's ability. And that the slave is able to do That's the one I gave the example for, which is Tahara for the prayer. And the second one is Ma laysa fi wasil abdi wa qudratihi. And the second one is that which is not in the ability of the slave. And that would be Kadukul al Wakti bin Nisbati al Salah. The entering of the prayer time is not something you're able to bring about. You're not able to move the sun to the zenith in order for Duhr, Duhr to enter. The second mas'ala that the author rahimahullah has concluded this chapter with is وَإِذَا فُعِلَ يَخْرُجُ الْمَأْمُورُ عَنِ الْعُهْدَةِ Is that anybody who does the obligatory act, he leaves, the author says, يَخْرُجُ عَنِ الْعُهْدَةِ what does he mean by يَخْرُجُ عَنِ الْعُهْدَةِ He means بَرَاءَةُ ذِمَّتِهِ وَسُقُوطِ الطَّلَبِ عَنْهُ This thing will be removed from you and it will be uplifted from you and you will not be demanded to come with it. If you do the obligatory, but what do you have to do it? What's the condition? أَنْ يَفْعَلَهُ That the person does it with he does it in accordance to the Sharia, which is that he observes two things, sincerity and in accordance to the Sunnah.